I recently picked up this skid steer near Atlanta, about four hours from where I live, and I had just before that picked up this Hudson trailer and went took the trailer down to get the skid steer. But as you can see here, this trailer is re has got a really, really steep angle of approach to it. When it comes to manufactured trailers, I really, really like Hudson. And I like them for this single frame member. And it's continuous. It's one piece the whole way. And this trailer is what I based my trailer build on. Not this exact trailer. I sold my other trailer that I had like this. But I really like this single axle. I mean, this single frame. That car trailer over there, I'll show that to you in a second. That's like a frame on top of a frame, so it's just a bunch of extra non-structural steel. So, if you look here, this is all one piece here, it's all continuous. And so it makes it very strong. A couple things that this trailer suffers from. The first is deck height. It's way too high. The second is there's no place to tie anything down. And so, they used C-channel here, but it's turned out or in or whatever you want to call it it's turned this way when it needs to be turned that way so when i did my trailer i turned it in and so you can you can clamp any anywhere on there so one of the things i have to do with this trailer is weld a bunch of d-rings onto it because there's no tie no place to tie anything down the other thing that this tra trailer suffers from is the dovetail is way too short and so to really ease this angle right here the longer your dovetail is, the better. So I did my dovetail over there at four feet. And so I don't think I'm gonna change this dovetail, but I think I'm gonna put some new axles on this thing. And that'll also get my wheels and tires pretty much uniform. So these are six lug 15s. Everything else I've got, well, everything else I've got equipment wise is eight lug 16 inch wheels. So not only will I get to have a more standardized set of wheels and tires i can also install a four inch drop axle on this thing and get that deck four inches down i know you all saw my trailer build video series already but this trailer has been working out really really well i've got tie downs everywhere the c channel is facing the other way so you can put a ratchet strap right there anywhere you can drop your chains and binders through here through those rails the dovetail on this thing is four feet so and the, the ramps are really long so this thing is really easy to load it's a really really been a great trailer i also have this deck space here tongue space if you want to call it pretty well fully utilized and so i really like this design as well now let's take a look at the car trailer This is a car trailer, and this has got the design I don't like. So we have a main frame here, under here, and then it stops right here. So what happens with these trailers, and you see it all the time, is it cra it'll crack right here. Right there, it'll crack. Because that's where the main frame stops. That main frame is not continuous all the way, and we have this deck frame here. And so this is all non-structural, so it's a complete waste. It, get, it makes the trailer weigh a lot more, and it makes a very weak point right there in front of that front axle. And so I've welded many a trailer that's cracked right there. Right there is where it cracks. This one's not cracked. Now this is a, I added these fold down ramps to it. So it looks more like an equipment trailer, but it's actually a car trailer. These are five lug, 3,500 pound axles. So this thing can only haul about 5,500 pounds. Even though I've had various amounts on it over the years, this has been a really, really good trailer. I wanted to mention one of the reasons I keep this trailer is it has a two inch ball on it. And so my ex U-Haul truck, the box truck has a two inch permanent ball. So this trailer pairs really well with that box truck. 
I specifically built this trailer with a four foot dovetail. So a really, really, really eased angle of approach. I also have four inch drop axles on this. So let me just show you what this skid steer looks like driving up on this trailer. So I'll talk more about the deck height later, but for now I want to take a look at the approach angle and see how it looks loading the same skid steer, same truck, same location. terrifying I'm not even at a really a downhill like you're never supposed to load a trailer facing uphill and this may be just a tiny bit but it's pretty it's pretty level across here so I don't even want to take it off of there it's it's just real sketchy I guess I'll give it a try You just really have to commit to it. That's just, it makes me really nervous. I'm just not used to tipping like that. So let me show you what I'm gonna do about it. Let me show you where I'm at with this trailer. So when you're switching from straight axles to drop axles, the measurements are going to be way off. And so these are 75 inch spring centers and 89 inch, I think, hub faces. These axles are 75 spring center and 95, I think it is hub face and so I just kind of got this old axle off and got the new one on just to check and see how it was going to look and I think these are going to be the right axles so I think this is going to work pretty well for me so I'm going to have to change out the mounting hardware the hangers I think a couple of them at least and the 7,000 pound stuff is way more heavy duty as well so that's kind of where I'm at with this I'm just kind of dummy fitting this to make sure that this is the right axle and it looks like it's going to be the right axle. So I'm going to need to replace all the mounting hardware, take the fender off. So let me get working on that.
now we can start to see what we're working with here. So these three mounting points have to come off and the new ones mounted on. There we go. Okay, I got all of those hanger brackets on there.
up there. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, the first axle is installed. Now let's see if I can manhandle this other one into place. Okay, so all the bolts are in there. They're all pretty much loose, and I had to loosen up these U-bolts too to get things to kind of move around a little bit. So let me go ahead and tighten everything back up and we should be in good shape.
and this worked great when it was off camera. Dear freaking God, it worked well. These tires are 14 ply and they're almost like tractor trailer. They're pretty much smooth. They've got the smooth wall on each side and they're supposed to be pretty gnarly for trailer tires. So I'm hoping these are gonna last really well. All right, let's see how the skid steer does loading up on the trailer with these four inch drop axles. Okay, that's still a little bit tippy for my liking, but it's a lot better than it was. I wish this dovetail was about twice as the length. So we'll try loading it and unloading it in a couple other positions here. But yeah, so far I'm pretty happy. I wanted to show you where I'm at with this trailer. So adding these four inch drop axles means that I had quite a bit of space that was right here. And so I was going to put my fenders right along here, but that would mean that my bigger skid steer won't fit on this trailer. And I towed the bigger skid steer with this trailer before I got the fenders on and I was like, okay, it, the big skid steer will fit on here with no fenders. And so I don't think I wanna limit myself by putting the fenders here. So I've been kind of test fitting them a little bit and I think I'm gonna put them centered on the, on the wheels, which means they're gonna be offset from the frame so to accomplish that, I've got some pieces of eighth inch diamond plate here. And I'm gonna use that to extend out a little bit. And what I'm working on here is I'm cutting out the side piece for the, for the fenders right here. And so I've just kind of been messing with this off camera and I wanted to bring you guys back in here and take a look. So let's, let's get going again on this project.
this four by six is kind of where I want my fender height to be, but I want it just a little bit higher and the two by sixes I had in there were a little bit too high. So I've got a couple pieces of, this should be three quarter inch hardwood from a remodel project I just did. So let's see if these do it for me. Give me the right height. I want, I want the fender to sit low enough that it's going to either rest on this or be right up against it and then I can weld it all together. So let's test fit that. Okay, I think I like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to weld these inner fender pieces on to the fender itself and make a one unit out of it. I also, gosh, I want to weld a piece across here, but I don't want that to mess up my, whoops, my height. I've got this thing clamped where I want it, so now I'm just going to tack it together. On my other trailer, where the support's going to go for the fender, I welded this little plate on there to give it a little bit of more rigidity. But I did that after the fact and was trying to do it upside down. So here, I'm just going to tack that piece on there while it's still off. Okay, I got that piece tacked on there. And I'm not sure that that's really necessary or not. These are 14 gauge fenders, but I think it adds a little bit of rigidity to it at the attachment point. So. It's a lot easier to get that on there now than when you're welding upside down. So now let's see if we can get this thing positioned. This is where I'm at with these fenders. I had a couple of four inch strips cut off that sheet of diamond plate that I bought and I think I want to leave these out here and do a gusset across from here to here. So let me see if I can get a line across there. Might be easier to cut it now before I weld it all together. And then I'm going to have to do something across here as well to really reinforce these things since they're sticking so far out. But I think it's going to work okay. And that'll give me an extra, what, two inches or so on each side? And, that, and that's a huge deal because if what you're loading doesn't fit through the fenders, you don't load it. So this is turning into quite a project, I guess. Maybe I should have just built another trailer, but I think it's gonna, gonna be really good in the end. And that's what we're going for. <clears throat> Well, I've been sitting here looking at this and measuring and remeasuring, and I think I've got it where I want it. So I think I'm ready to go ahead and send it home and get this fender tacked the rest of the way on here. So this is already welded in place. I want to get the fender onto that guy. So everything looks really good. I just keep looking at it and I think I like it. So I think it's time to send it.
been trying to fabricate up another gusset here and I think I've got it. So let me tack that in place and see how it does. It's already a lot stronger and it's not even tacked all the way on. All right, let's keep tacking. Woo! All right, take a look at this fender gusset. I just got that all finished up on the front. It's my first one. So let me show you what I did on the rear one over here. First of all, I want to show you where we're at. So take a look. So it's pretty stiff, but it still has a little bit of play to it. And what I'm going to do here what I'm going to do here is add this piece right across there and I still have to cut this piece but that'll go across there so boy, it really stiffened up that other side. So let's see how we do on this side. Okay, I just got all that welded together. So what do you all think? You think it's any stiffer? I was definitely worried about these fenders being strong enough, being offset like they are, but I think we're gonna be in really good shape. Let's just see how we did do here. Hang on a sec. Okay, I'm pretty pleased. So do a little bit of touch up, grind some of those welds down and get these things painted. This is my last trailer gusset, so I wanted to show you. I'm just getting this thing welded in. And that's what really gives this thing a lot of strength. So I'm pretty excited about how strong these turned out. Okay, I just got my last piece welded in. This cross member here, and I'm not a very 
I don't really like welding upside down, but this welder is dialed right in right now, so take a look at that. So, I came out pretty well for welding upside down. I'm all finished with fabricating these fenders, and so what I'm working on right now is getting them painted. So the first thing I want to do is grind everything down really well, tape everything off, probably get the tires and wheels off, and get to painting. I had a request to paint these fenders a bright orange color, make this trailer look pretty unique. So we're going to give that a try and see how it does. If it doesn't look very good, I can always paint them back to black. So here we go. This trailer has been working out really, really well. And since I added those 7,000 pound axles, I can carry all my equipment. So my biggest piece of equipment is about 11,000 pounds, a little bit less. And that makes it really nice to be able to carry everything and I can fit everything on the trailer. It's been working out real well. You all already saw this clip. And let me know in the comments if you recognize the trailer or if you were wondering where I got it. So this is just another example of me using the trailer that I had. This truck has been absolutely flawless. So I've been driving it for probably a couple months now, haven't had any problems with it. And I just picked up this little guy here. This one has got some coil pack problems. It's, it's running kind of rough. And this was somebody I knew, so 500 bucks, boom. So let me get this unloaded real quick. This trailer's been working out really well. This trailer has been working out so well that I want to up, update the wiring a little bit. Now everything works. The only problem is there's no charger for this battery, this breakaway kit right here. So this is just a battery. There's no way that it charges. And so on my other equipment trailer build, I purchased one of these, which is a charger and a battery all in one. And so it's one of those deals where this, this thing is not, it's not like it's not working or anything. But if anything did happen, this breakaway system is not functioning. So I'd like to replace this with the actual battery charger that comes with the battery so it can charge while it's plugged into the vehicle. Now what that means is I've got to probably probe all these wires and figure out what's what. These colors may be what they're supposed to be, but then on the trailer side they're going into all kinds of weird colors. So there's like three or four reds in here and that sort of thing. So kind of 
hesitant to mess with this. It's working right now, but I do know that the battery breakaway system is not working. This junction box is really nice because it really lays out all the different colors and it makes a nice, easy, tidy connection. You don't have those blue connectors. So this is going to get mounted somewhere and then the battery pack will get mounted somewhere as well. This kit came with a couple of self tappers. We'll see if they'll work or not on this thick trailer tongue. I'm just finishing getting this break, breakaway box hooked up and I noticed that I did not have charging from the truck. And so I just pulled the trailer charge, I think they call it trailer battery charge fuse. And it didn't look blown to me. I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I actually pulled it and looked, there's a tiny, tiny little crack on it. And so, let me show you here. If you have a fuse like this, what you can do is you can set your multimeter to check for continuity. And most of them will give you a beep when you have continuity. So you hear that beep? And so obviously a fuse is supposed to let current go through it. This one does not have continuity. So this fuse is blown. Now here is a fuse that I must have pulled out of a junkyard or something. Look at how discolored that is. But when you check it, it has continuity. So this is a good fuse. So I'm going to put this back in place. I just got that fuse replaced. And this is a handy little tool. This is just a trailer tester. So I'm going to plug this in and see if that actually fixed my problem. Okay, so check it out. Hopefully you can see that 12 volt is lit up. So I should be in pretty good shape. So now that didn't blow the fuse. So let's see what happens when I plug the trailer in. And hopefully the trailer is not what's blowing this fuse. Okay, and now my charging light is lit up. So something blew that fuse, I don't know what it was. And I can't remember if this truck had been charging trailers or not. So I'm going to keep a close eye on that fuse and make sure it doesn't blow again. Okay, so what this does, this breakaway system here, there is a switch right here. And so the battery comes into that switch. We've got this blue wire here coming into the switch. That wire goes through the switch right here and goes back out across here. And this wire goes to directly to the trailer brakes. And so what that means is this is kind of the opposite of a fuse. When the, when this, when this switch is in here, <clears throat> when that is in there, you see how it's plastic there's no continuity across there. But as soon as this, this gets pulled out, this juices up both of these wires. And so the battery now on the trailer is going to juice up the trailer brakes. And so the idea here being, if this trailer falls off the truck and the plug jerks out, what happens is this is attached to the truck and this pulls out. So let me show you that really quickly. Let me show you what I've got here. I've got the trailer jacked up. And so both axles are off the ground here. Check it out. <clears throat> and I'm gonna leave the trailer. I've got, I've got it hooked up to the truck. 
just for stability, but I'm going to simulate what this breakaway system is supposed to do. So let's imagine that the trailer has fallen off the truck. So we've disconnected our juice right there. So the only juice on this trailer now is this battery system. So let's see if we can simulate what happens. So of course, when the trailer lets go and the chains let go, this is going to pull this switch out. And so let me see if I can catch it here. All right, so I've got a camera right there for you to see. So let's say we're going down the road, trailer lets go and the switch pulls out. We're going down the road, trailer lets go and the switch pulls out. And so look what happened there. It just And so look what happened there. It just it just locked those brakes up. So that is not moving at all. And so that's what that breakaway system does. Is when this switch pulls out, it is going to connect the battery to the trailer brakes. And it'll apply the trailer brakes and hopefully that'll stop the trailer much much sooner, causing less damage and problems so now when i plug this thing back in the link will be broken well you can even hear it it's like a click over there and then we've got we're loose again just to show you again for comparison this trailer had a battery hooked up and that's the same idea except that you have to manually charge this battery before every trip. And so this box here, and I'm gonna link this for you guys, this is a charger. So when the truck is on and you're driving around, it's charging its own battery. And so that's a huge, huge improvement to just a battery stuck in a box that gets forgotten about. And so when I built my yellow trailer, I really gained a better appreciation for the safety systems that are available today. And so when you understand how these things work and you understand why they're in place, you start to feel like you really need them working on your stuff because if the unthinkable should happen on this trailer and it lets go, knowing that I've got the, the safety mechanisms up and running and working correctly, it just gives me a lot of peace of mind. So I'm gonna put a, a link in the description to this little guy and you can install one on your trailer too. The next thing I'm working on with this trailer is this coupler. So this coupler is a piece of crap. It's got this little lever on it. And if, if you lower it down and the trailer is pushed forward, you can't lock it down. So let me see if I can do that real quick to show you. I'm just gonna push the trailer forward. So if the trailer is pushed forward right there, you see, look at that, it won't lock. And so what you have to do is you have to jerk on the trailer and get it to pull back a little bit. I'm gonna try to do this here. And then it'll lock. So that's just really, really annoying because usually you have to use the truck to do it and you can't get this thing to hook up. And then half of your workers won't hook it up right. So after a lot of deliberation on this thing, I'm going to replace this coupler. Now, the coupler I used on my yellow trailer, this one is absolutely fantastic. So this one just drops on, it's automatic. It's got this big strong spring in here. It's just, it's just everything about it is, is wonderful. And so I'm going to weld on this channel here, just like I did on my yellow trailer, and get rid of this bolt-on piece of crap. To get this coupler off, it's just got four bolts.
Okay, I'm ready to weld, so let me tack this thing in place. I found a couple of more triangles or gussets in my collection, so I'm going to weld these in here, probably down here somewhere, just for the heck of it. That fits a lot better. Okay, I think I've got a coupler. Okay, take a look. So, that welded on there pretty well. Looks pretty strong. So I'm pretty happy. And now I've got a nice adjustable coupler and one that I'll just set down on there on the ball and click in. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, the next thing I want to work on here is these trailer chains. So this little hook here is the opening right here is barely big enough to fit in those heavy duty D-rings I've got. So you know what that means. These chains have got to go. So I've never used these before, but I like this because you can remove the pin here and you can change out your chains. This guy is welded straight on there. That'll never change. And unless you do something different there, you can't ever use that fixed point again. So these guys are supposed to be good for 12,000 pounds. I don't know if that's a piece or a pair. And then these, these are nice heavy duty trailer chains. So I'm excited to get those on there. Okay, look at that. That thing is just melted in place. So I'm pretty happy about those. Same with that one. Looks pretty good. So let me get this thing primed and painted. I just got this coupler bolted on and finished up so I went with orange to match the fenders and I'll talk more about my color choice at the end of the video. Right now what I'm working on is this is like all just dead wasted space right here and so I've got a couple pieces of expanded metal that I had cut to two feet and I can't remember what I was going to do with those but they've been sitting there for a while. And so the trailer had this piece of angle iron, but it's facing the wrong way. So this is a piece of two by three inch and I just cut it 
to fit in there and so I'm gonna tack it in and then that expanded metal will lay in there I'm probably gonna put a piece of angle across each side too so pretty straightforward just a little mesh basket for this trailer Okay, I think I'm finished with this trailer. So I got this little front basket in there. And of course I painted it orange. So I'll talk more about that later. Got this all done. So this is, this is a huge upgrade. Got some really gnarly chains on there. So that looks really nice. And I guess I'll keep using this thing. This is my first time hooking up with this new coupler, so I wanted to show you. Watch how this coupler works and this automatic spring lock works. I think I like that better. <clears throat> the trailer is sitting a little bit better. And look at that, my battery box is charging. So I'm excited. This will make this trailer way easier to use. This basket up here, of course, is pretty self-explanatory. That's where all my straps are going to be carried now. So uh, I'll always have a bunch of straps with me and all my tie downs and stuff. Boom, right there.
I'm heading down to Carson's property this morning. He's been seeing this mini bobcat in some of my videos and he's just like drooling over this little machine. So he really likes it. We're gonna go do some brush hogging down there and see how it does for him. another black rat snake. Ooh. These are really nice snakes. <laughs> That's a little one though. Yeah, here you go. As long as you support them really well. These are climbers too. So they're really good at climbing. But he hasn't even tried to bite me. He said, I had to get out of there. Somebody was bush hogging my home. Yep. All right, you can have it back tomorrow. But that's a nice one. You want it? You want to hold it? No, I ain't holding a snake. <laughs> Why not? It won't hurt you. Not that one. Here, check it out. <laughs> Come on, man. He's just a widow snake. He's really, really smooth, too. Yeah, he is. That must be fresh skin. Yep. Here. Okay. Seriously, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> you never know, man. She might have to. What have kind to... of country boys are these? Not the kind that like snakes, apparently. All right. Well, let's put them back, I guess. No takers. See, look at that. He's not even in a hurry to get out of here. Yeah, he was at first, and he's like, okay, these people are all right. Yep. You gotta grease these things too. Oh yeah, each one of these rollers has got a zerk on it. I've had this trailer for about six months now and it's been working out really, really well. I first got it because I wanted another equipment trailer and just really for convenience and in case one of them ever had a problem with flat tire or something, I could keep going. So this one was available. I found it on Marketplace, I think it was. And what I didn't realize about it is that the deck height was so high. And so the fact that it had the six lug, 6,000 pound axles, meant that changing over to a four inch drop with eight lug, 7,000 pound was, was, okay, was an okay deal. I was able to sell the old axles and wheels and hardware and fenders for right at half of what I paid for the new stuff. So that, that washed out pretty well. I guess I have about $6,000 total into the trailer and so that seems like a lot and I'm wondering why I didn't build a trailer. I guess if you've ever built a trailer, it's very, very time consuming. So even though building a trailer, I could get everything I wanted, I really didn't want to spend the time and build another trailer. So this was a pretty good compromise. And spending $6,000 on this trailer seems like a crazy amount to me and the deck boards still need to be replaced. 
So all you can do if you spend too much money on a project is just use it and enjoy it and not worry about the money. For example, every time I look at these fenders, I'm reminded of how I had to fabricate them and get them to work and they turned out fantastic. So that kind of thing goes a long way for sure. As far as the coupler and the battery backup thing, those were just kind of bothering me because I knew there was a better way to go and the cost was a little bit of an issue. I'm like, do I want to spend another hundred dollars on a new coupler and you know, several hours or however long it took to, to hook that all up. And so eventually after using this enough, it's, it's almost like the trailer earned it. You know, I, I put a little bit more money back into the trailer, the mesh basket, that was just a pain, but I knew that was going to be a huge, huge convenience thing to be able to put all my strap downs and tie downs and ratchet straps down there. So that was, that was on my list. It was just a pain. I just had to get some motivation to do it. So I've been using this trailer quite a bit now, and it's just very handy to be able to park. If I have, like if I have this piece of equipment on it and I need something else, it's very handy to be able to just park this truck and trailer off to the side, grab another truck and trailer and equipment and go. So it's a convenience factor. It's also a nice redundancy in case one of the trailers gets a flat or goes down somehow. So, uh, as far as the, the orange color goes, here in North Carolina, we have tags and titles on trailers, but South Carolina and Virginia don't. And so a lot of trailers get stolen and taken to those states and resold where they don't care if there's a title or not. And so the biggest deterrent for trailer theft is having a trailer that's unique. And the best of example, of course, is having a trailer with your graphics all over it and even your phone number all over it. And so when it came time to choose a color, first of all, I like color over black, so I would have been okay with any color really, but I ended up with this Kubota orange color and I, I like it, I think it turned out really well. And I think it makes a nice unique looking trailer as well. So let me know what you think about the color that I chose and how this trailer looks. But other than that, I guess I will end this video here. This trailer's been working out really well and I've been using it quite a bit. So, all right, thanks for watching.